Hey, Paul Halliday for Learn Ionic 2. Today we're going to talk about adding badges to our Ionic 2 applications. Now, you've most likely seen badges before on your home screen. This is essentially where your app icon has a little number, usually to the top right of the icon. You would use these badges to potentially display unread messages to the user. You can see this as an example with the Facebook application when there's unread notifications. The awesome thing about the Badges plugin is that it's supported on a variety of different devices. For example, iOS, Android, Amazon Fire OS, Windows Phone, Windows Phone 8, and more. So to get started, let's install the Cordova plugin. Run Ionic plugin add, Cordova, dash plugin, dash badge. We can also add the Ionic native module for the badge. So npm install dash dash save at Ionic native slash badge. I'll also be adding the Android platform. So Ionic platform add Android. And I'll be creating a live reload server. So Ionic run Android dash L. Let's open this up in VS Code. So the first thing to do is head over to source app at module.ts and import the badge plugin. So import from Ionic native slash badge. We want the badge provider and we can add this to the list of providers. So badge, then we can close app module.ts. I'm then going to go into tsconfig.json and change my target to ES6 and within home, we can import badge once again. So import from Ionic native slash badge, we can import badge and then injector inside of our constructor. So private badge badge. And the first thing that I'll be doing is creating some buttons inside of our view. So the title will be homepage badges and inside of the content, we're going to have a few buttons. So the first button is going to have a click event of set badge. The second button is going to have a click event of get badges. And the third button is going to have the click event of request permission. So we can set the badges, we can get the badges, and we'll also be able to get the permission. So request permission is going to go in the text field, get badges, and set badges. Set badges is also going to take a badge number and we're going to have an input up top here. So ion item. And inside the item we'll have a label. This label will be floating and I'll say badge number. Then we'll have an input and we'll make the ion inputs type the number. So we can only input numbers and we'll attach an ng model to this named badge number. So if we take a look at our device, we see that we have a badge number input and three buttons. Let's firstly fill out the request permission button. So let's make this function. We want an async function named request permission. And we can first make a try catch so we can catch any errors. We will log out the error to the console if there is one. But if there's not, we'll simply say let permission, so the result of the promise, is equal to this dot badge dot register permission. If the permission worked, we're going to log out what the answer was in the console. So if we click request permission, we get true because we now have permission to use the badges. We could make this function a little bit more powerful and we could say let has permission and give that the result of this dot badge dot has permission. And if has permission is not true, i.e. we don't have permission, we can then get permission. We can log out both has permission and permission. But as we already have permission, we will never get into this code block here. So when we click request permission, we get true again but that's because we have permission already. So let's make a function where we set the amount of badges. So async set badges. And if you remember, 
it requires a badge number, like so. So let's make a badge number, a type number, and we can pass it in to our set badges function. This just makes it a little bit more testable. We could put the badge number just inside here and don't pass anything in at all, but it's a little bit more testable if we do it like this. So badge number is supposed to be a number. So we can add a try catch block and inside of our try, we can use let badges. So this will be the badge number after we set the badges is equal to the resolved promise using a weight of this dot badge dot set and then the badge number. So badge number. We can then log that out to the console. If there is an error, we can use console.error e. We also need to add an S on the end of that badges. So if we save this, we should now be able to set badges to a particular amount. I'm going to set badges to one. And as you see in the console, we get one back from the result of our badges promise. If I set this to 10, you'll see we get 10 back. So setting the badges does not add the badges, but instead sets it to a particular amount. Let's make the function to get the badges. So async get badges. And we can try catch again. We can say let badge amount is equal to the resolved promise of this dot badge dot get. And then we can simply log out the badges in the console. So log out badge amount. You can see that we've already got this function here inside of the button. So click get badges and you see that we have 10. As we've already dealt with requesting permission, I'm going to comment this out for now. And I'm going to make a new button underneath set badges and it's going to say increase badges. And let's also add the amount. So increase badges by badge number. And on here we can do set badges to badge number. And inside of our increase badges by we can make the function increase badges and pass through a badge number. So async increase badges. And let's specify the type as a number. We can add a try catch here. So now we can use let badge is equal to the resolved promise of this dot badge dot increase. And then as you can see, it requires a number. So we can put badge number. But when we put badge number, something funny is going to happen. Let's also log any potential errors. And then let's run this code. So make sure we've saved it. And we've already seen if we set badges, that'll set badge to a particular amount. So let's set the badges to 20. And you can see that we have 20. But let's now increase the badges by 20. And you see we get 2020, which is not what we expected. Because we wanted to increase by 20 to make it 40. But instead, it turned into 2020. Now this is because the badge number that is passed in here in increase badges is actually a string when it's part of the input. So that's effectively just concatenating that string to give us 2020 instead of actually doing the arithmetic to increase the badge number. So instead, let's pass through the badge number as a string and let's simply cast that to a number. So we can set the badges to 20 and as you see, we get 20 back. And now we can increase the badges by 20. And you see, we get 40. And that's because we've put our badge number in as a string. And this is what it is when it's on the input. Then we cast our badge number, the string, to a number. And that allows us to appropriately increase it by a number and not simply concatenate a string. So let's do a similar thing, but now let's do decrease badges. So decrease badges. And we can basically copy paste the function, but instead of increase, we use decrease. And let's copy paste the button and decrease badges like so. And if we save this, it should subtract the amount of badges from our current badges. So if we get the badges, you can see that we have 40. But if we decrease the badges by 20, we get 20, as expected. The final thing to do is to clear the badges when we're finished with them. So we can use async clear badges. 
And this can be a try catch block again. And we'll say let badge is equal to the resolved promise of this dot badge dot clear. And we can do anything we want after this. We'll console.log the badges, but I imagine it's simply going to say zero. And we can quickly make a button on our front end that simply says clear badges. So one last time, let's get the badges. We're at 20. We'll set the badges to 10. We'll increase the badges by 10, giving us 20 again. We'll decrease the badges by 10, giving us our 10 again. And finally, we can clear the badges, which gives us zero. So if this tutorial has helped you and you can now implement badges within your Ionic application, then hit that subscribe button. It lets me know you like the content and you want to see more. And of course, check out learnionic2.com for more Ionic 2 information. My name is Paul Halliday and I'll see you in the next video.